Hello, I'm Donna from Riverside Beads. Today I'm going to show you how to make an eight braid Kamahimo bracelet using satin cord. This is one of the projects from my book, A Beginner's Guide to Kamahimo. So let's get started with the tools and materials you'll need and how to make the bracelet. cord around your wrist to measure the length. Measure the cord and multiply the length by four. When your cord's on the roll, just cut it off to the length required. Cut four pieces of cord the same length. For an average bracelet, this will be four one metre lengths of cord. I've done two in one colour and two in another to make a, a striped bracelet. Find the centre point of the cord by pinching up in the middle, like so. Take a surplus piece of cord, this piece will be thrown away at the end, so it can be any colour, any small piece of cord you have, and tie it around the centre. Do a double knot and tie to secure. You now have your four pieces of cord secured in the centre. Take your Kamahimo disc and the knot in the centre of your cord. Place it in the middle hole of the disc. I tend to hold onto the centre there and position the cords in place. So for a standard stripe, place the cords either side of north, east, south, west. So for a stripe, it would be one colour either side of south, and north and you put these in place by taking the cord and pushing it in to the foam disc. The discs are a nice lightweight foam that allow you to position the cord in place. Now once you have all these four cords positioned into place I do a check by holding up the disc and checking that all the cords are roughly an equal length and that you haven't over pulled one of them when positioning them in place. The way you lay the cords out on the top of the disc will determine the pattern that you get, but we'll start with a basic double stripe at this stage. To braid your Kamahimo, take your top right cord from underneath the disc and take it down to the bottom right slot, to the right of the other two cords. Then take your bottom left cord out from underneath and up to the top left, to the left of the cord up there. So that's your first moves. Quarter turn it anti-clockwise and repeat. So you take your top right cord down and your bottom left cord up. Turn and repeat right down to right and left up to left. Quarter turn anti-clockwise and repeat right to right, left to left. Turn right to right, left to left and turn. So it's top, down, bottom, up and turn. Top, down, bottom, up and turn. Next move, take your top right cord down to your bottom right, and this is a stop point so you can have a look at what's going on underneath. So turn your disc over, take hold of your white piece of cord, in my case here, and give it a pull, and it'll put it into its natural tension. And then you can see your braid emerging from the bottom of your disc. When you turn your disc back round, you know you're on your bottom left one to come up because you've already put your top right one down and then you can proceed on with your braiding. Now I've finished the braiding, and here's the cord coming through the center of the disc. Take your cords off, two at a time, and hold them four in one hand and four in the other. Like so, you can drop your disc down like that. Then we simply tie a knot with all of these just to secure it at this stage. And then 
all that there. So that's all going to come off in a moment. So that's to stop the braid unraveling there. So what we do with this piece that we put in at the beginning is we take that out. So we untie that and then we pull that out. And that should just slide out. And that leaves a nice neat bullet end there to go into one end of the end cap. And then we're ready to prepare this to, to add our end caps onto. So take a surplus piece of, this is a beading cotton, Nymo, or just any standard cotton. And this ties round the end of the braid. So you would measure it to where you want it to be size wise. Just bearing in mind the clasp that you put on may add some length onto the braid. So I'm taking this quite near to the end and I'm tying this around the end of the braid. So I've tied that once. I just shuffle it up there in place a little. And then I'm tying it a second time around there. Like so. Then what I'm going to do is bind this around. So I'm holding that one in place and taking the longer length and winding it around a few times. Now that again has slipped down lower than I wanted it to. So I will just move that up into place. And I can bind around again just to tighten that off. Then when you've done that a few times, you tie that again with that surplus piece of cord you had here. And again, a double knot. And if you want to be extra secure, you can pop a little drop of glue before you cut the cord off. Because that binding is all that's going to hold that in place to stop it unraveling. Okay, so that's now secure. So if you did want to drop a glue just on the knot there. Okay, then what we do is we cut the surplus ends of this off, not too close, especially if you're not putting glue on it, because that will then unravel. And then we're ready to put our glue in our end caps. Take your glue, I use an E6000, which is a nice flexible 3D glue that is secure for metal and fabric. Squeeze about a quarter of a capful, not a lot, in the end of the cap and I scrape it off onto the side there so it's just gone inside the cap okay I prepare both of these ready before I cut the ends off okay so one end is quite easy to glue in because that's got a nice bullet end it's this one that, that uh, we need to get right so take your scissors and we're going to be cutting it above the braid where we've done our binding, but not too close to it. And we trim through. And if you need to, just tidy up any ends, but they should be able to just glue into the end cap. Take the cap and position in the cords in. And give it a little turn as you pop that in just to secure it. And that's one end in, probably the most difficult end in. So let's do the other end, which is already nice and secure. And we simply pop that in with the glue and give it a turn round. And there's your braid. Now this glue takes overnight really to cure properly. So I tend to leave it like that to dry. And then in the morning you can shape it round and do your clasps of it. But I've used one with an extension chain, which gives you that flexibility for the length of your braid if you're a little bit short on your braiding at all. I hope you enjoyed making this bracelet with me today. You can vary the finished results that you get by using different thicknesses of cords, such as in these two. You can see on this one here, I've got a double stripe in the pattern and there's lots more variations that you can create with your braid. I always recommend people make a few braided ones before they go on to the next step which is some of the beaded designs, which are absolutely beautiful to experiment with. My book, A Beginner's Guide to Kamehimo, does work through 12 projects, starting with the beginner's one there. Lots of different designs working through the beaded projects and some of the braided ones too, to help develop your, your braiding techniques. So enjoy making your Kamehimo and welcome to this new journey of braiding. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.